What's up guys, so a lot of people have been requesting videos on uh, the Fibonacci series and I can understand because it's a pretty daunting thing to start off with it's, it, it doesn't just come to you generally so you have to think a bit about it so first I'm gonna tell you what the Fibonacci series is and I'm, I'll give you the first few Fibo numbers and then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go through with you how to code it I won't give you the whole solution because that that would be pretty a pretty silly thing to do but I'm gonna give you enough hints so that you can figure it out on your own and from then on you can post your approach in the comments and um, I can tell you where you're going wrong or where you should think differently so the, the Fibonacci series starts off like this 0 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 dot 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 and so on now you can figure out very simply that every third term is the sum of the previous two it's pretty obvious that relation so here 1 is 1 plus 0 2 is 1 plus 1 3 is 1 plus 2 8 is 5 plus 3 and so on so essentially that is the Fibonacci series. Now how do you go about printing this in a program? Essentially you should use three variables. Let's say T1, T2 and T3. Now out here what is the first T1? T1 initially is 0 and T2 initially is 1 and what is T3? T3 is T1 plus T2 now depending on how many numbers you want to generate let's say you want the first 100 Fibonacci numbers I don't advise you to try that out because I think Fibonacci numbers get big really fast so the 100th Fibonacci number will be a pretty big number it might give you a, might take a lot of time to compile and to run so but if you want to repeat something what what do we use when we want to repeat something we use a loop we always use a loop when we want to repeat something say a while loop or a for loop whatever it is that you want but we always use a loop when we want to repeat something so essentially even this time you use a loop loop let's say you loop 15 or 20 times you have a for loop that goes 20 times and inside that for loop you have t3 set to t1 plus t2 because this is essentially the important term right the third term is the sum of the first two and there you can let's say you can print out your t3 inside your loop once you print out t3 you need to observe you need to make a few observations over here what's happening if this is t3 and this is t2 let me just label it here and this is t3 and this is t1 what happens to t2 and t1 well for the next number for 2 for this number this becomes t3 this becomes t2 and this becomes t1 so essentially t2 has shifted one place ahead so t2 is equal to t3 because the old value of t3 comes in the new value of t2 and then t1 has got the old value of t2 so t1 is equal to t2 but if you did this this is a misconception that people have if you did this you would not get your output now if you think about this you see obviously you won't get your output because you already set t2 equal to t3 so you're just setting t1 equal to t3 again so this is wrong let me wrong don't do that what you do instead is you set t1 equal to t2 first and t3 uh, i'm sorry t2 equal to t1 
53 and this is where your loop ends if you try running this code I mean I haven't given you the code but I've given you an explanation if you try writing your code yourself and running it then you should get your output and it will run from 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 and so on if you want to print these first two numbers you can print it outside the loop with two individual statements like this T1 and another one for T2 so that's it for this video it's a